So, Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Guns for Hire. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode. As usual, check out Jesse Gender's video on the episode. I will put the link in the description box. I agree with everything she said, and we'll try not to restate any of it. I, I did want to briefly add, she points out that there's stuff in this episode that would be really cool to like get more exploration of. I hope that they do bring back something, you know... I don't know if it's going to be on The Mandalorian, uh, certainly... I'm not sure I see them going back there this season. There would have to be some other... Because they did address the problem that there was. And I guess an, a spin-off just focused on this place might be too much. But I do think that not all of what she pointed out it could be addressed like that. But I do think that there's certainly more that... You know, she, she points out the, the whole thing of the, the class issues that, yeah, I, I wish the episode did better on that, but at this point I am just restating what she said, so, yeah, into my own notes. I really like that the, the you know, one of the, the you know, on the, on the ship at the start with the, with the it's squid people, you know, some, one, you know, one goes up and plops a, a fish into the, into the fish bowl, and she eats it, and you know when when they when she has to talk to the 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 Mandalorians, you know the the water has to go down. She ends up in a in a normal chair. I figure you know clearly she doesn't need it because the the officers on deck are the same species as her, and they're sitting on normal chairs. But I figure this is that species equivalent of like you know the the um, the captain of the ship has the best seat and the best view in this whole thing you know so so yeah i appreciate that and yeah you know axe pipes up and yeah we see that he you know we had already been told here are some mandalorians who are mercenaries so yeah Mercilorians, very cool. And yeah, the, the fish people romance, very, very sweet. Like I did not expect at all and gutsy of them to, to play it straight. Like that it's not we're not supposed to laugh at. It is legitimately this sort of tragic romance that we we only get a brief glimpse into, but like yeah, it's not played for laughs, and I really appreciate that. And yeah, so so the Din and Bo-Katan, the, the duo of them, go to the, the pl 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 place here, some, something like that, and sh the control of the ship is taken away from them, and they're, they're you know, it's, you know, may I scan your chain code, and they agree to that, and then they're, you know, you, you know, the, the, was it, the, the rulers of this planet request, you know, would like to see you, something like that. Um, maybe some other time. Oh, it's not a request. You know, don't get out of the the the, the train car kind of thing. You know, and I quite like because you know we're told they don't have a standing army. So yeah, if a ship comes close to them, you know, it's the control of that ship will be taken away from those people, which is, like, if you think about, you know, if there was, like, military or police or something, they would also, you know, they would they would radio, like, that's, that's how it, like, if you try to land your plane in an airport, the, the, you know, and, and they don't already know you, they're going to contact you and see, okay, why are you trying to land here, who are you, this kind of thing. So yeah, this is the the Star Wars equivalent of that. If you don't have a standing army, and the the thing of the the um, um you know it asks, may we scan your chain codes? Now I'm thinking if they had refused, or if they let it be scanned, and the scan showed, oh, they're like pirates or some you know 
yeah, it's going to be like, okay, you're going straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 credits. You know, so so that's quite clever. And, and you know, once the, you know, yeah, if the if the train car can pull all the way into the, the prison and then, like, you know, lock the door behind them, you know, then you don't need that much in the way of the, the um, um, you know, even if you, if, and actually, yeah, the, the prison guards might have weapons, you know, the, the, the police force don't have weapons, but, and they don't have a standing army, but they might still have, but, but yeah, that was, I, I quite like that, and yeah, you know, ones of a, okay, so they're, they're bounty hunters, but they're Mandalorians, Honor forbids them from giving up their weapons. We can use that kind of thing, you know. So yeah, and that you know, and 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 Din is like, do you think we might have to blast our way out? And I just want the the you know the automated voice to go, uh, yeah, you might. You know, we can still hear you, right? Because it's, I don't know. I feel like if there had maybe been just a brief like. Yeah, yeah, tell you what, tell you what. Bo-Katan isn't wearing her helmet, so we can see her face. Just have Din, like, maybe maybe put his head slightly to the side, like, thinking, and have his hand slowly approach, you know, he, yeah, he, he places, he, he hovers his hand right outside the, the what's it called, um, the, the thing on the belt of the, where the gun is. You know, sheath. She that's for swords, but whatever, you know what I mean. And, like, yeah, and maybe, like, he looks down, and then he looks up at her, and, like, a questing way, and she, like, you know, her eyes go to the side, like, thinking, ah, and she shakes her head no, or something like that, you know. Instead of just saying it when, literally, like, they're not talking any quieter than they were when they were talking to the automated voice, and they're still in the same train car, yeah, anyway. And, yeah, Jack Black, who slots right into Star Wars, which, let's be honest, not a huge surprise there, like, glad to see it, but, like, yeah, you know, that, this is like when I, when I found out he was in a Weird Al Yankovic music video, it's like, oh, yeah, how did this not happen sooner, kind of thing, you know, and Lizzo, which is very cool, I did wonder if the, the key to Plazir that she hands them at the end was going to be in the shape of a flute, but apparently not. Well, not. And, yeah, we, you know, we were told about these droid malfunctions, and... Yeah, I, I do like that Grogu is very happy to be with him. You know, Din is like, ah, he's not great with strangers. And she's like, I have a treat for you. And Grogu is like, what? You know, jumping over immediately. And he's like having the time of his life for the rest of the episode. So that's really cool. And it is, you know, it's that kind of stereotypical thing of like, you know, a rich woman... Like you know, she's gonna she's gonna like really spoil her pet, you know, or or someone else's pet, someone else's baby in this case, you know. So so yeah, and yeah, uh, Christopher Lloyd again. Don't know how they managed to go this long without Star Wars, the Star Wars world for him. He was in Star Trek like what forty years ago or something. So it's about time that he got to be in Star Wars as well, uh, you know, and he. Overall, he's more fun in Star Trek, but that's, he, they gave him a really, like, he, he got to really have fun in that role. And he is great here, as well. And, let's see, yeah, and we, we learned that the voters would rather have something dangerous than work harder, so we have some comments on, like, slavery, which, not that, you know, the idea of, of slave uprisings to hurt, uh, you know, the, the slave owners, that's blown way out of proportion if we're talking about America. But, uh, you know, you know this, this thing of them not wanting to work, even if the conditions are not ideal, uh, you know, and, yeah, very much makes me think of, like, corporate control. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that corporations do that, you know, if... if a lot of regular people wouldn't be willing to do those things on their own, even though people are getting hurt. 
you know, and there's been a lot of, of criticism of modern America in recent Star Wars, so I feel like that's probably what they're going for. And I, I like that, you know, at first, the Ugnaughts aren't really listening to Bo-Katan, and then Din, you know, he refers to Quill, and, you know, immediately gets their set. Like, immediately all of them, like, look away from what they were doing. And just, and he even says, I have spoken. So, yeah, really, really great. And it is this kind of thing of, you know, some cultures, you got to speak their language or they're not going to be very receptive. And, let's see, the, um, and, and also, you know, I, I criticize the, the pirate captain's, um, uh, mouth man uh, yeah, face animatronics a little bit the the ones for the Ognauts are still on point like the the little movements in the face like you look at it and you almost forget no no, no that's not that nobody's face looks like that on earth you know no they they built this uh, you know animatronic and like the the little because it's it's the it's the subtleties in the human face you know that's also why like animation that isn't completely on point we can like it's it's uncanny valley but here like holy crap just completely convincing and yeah they go and and din starts kicking droids and like yeah you had me at battle droids i d it did kind of surprise me that no one referred to the super battle droid as a super battle droid they kept calling it a battle droid like i don't know i mean i guess it's like in the video games and probably the toys I never bought. I, you know, by that time I wasn't buying toys anymore when those movies were big. But yeah, um, I don't know. I guess maybe in the Star Wars galaxy they are just all cold battle droids. Anyway, the but but yeah, and and you know, there's a, a chase and some fighting and such. And I like, you know, this they could easily. You know, I forgive the episode for making me think of iRobot. The, the, the fact that it, you know, what, it's basically, it doesn't go back to what it was doing. It actually, it runs off and it tries to attack them and, and these, you know, yeah, it's, it's running away and every so often it'll turn and attack them or something. That proves that there's something, because th this is not the original programming, you know. There's clearly something else going on here, because the original programming, why would it run? You know, it, it sees an enemy, so it just attacks. I've never seen a, a um, you know, original programming Super Battle Roy run. So, so that's a, a re very, very clever kind of, like, even if it thinks that it might lose, you know, the the um, yeah so so that was a great and I like that the police tape is is created by those the the police droids and they talk about your way or mine and finally droids in Star Wars have a bar to their own one where they aren't kicked out and you know then nobody but droids are in there and the moment that the door opens and to organics show up everyone goes super quiet which does also really have the feel of this like it's like they're going into an area that they aren't supposed to be it's they're, they're not they don't usually accept people that aren't part of their culture so yeah and I, I like, you know, at, at first Bo-Katan tries to be diplomatic with the bartender droid and then the you have the you know din tries to take control of the situation and it does also end up working i really like the there's this brief bit there's for example the pan where all of the droids in the bar are like agreeing so they're like sticking the the little what's it called um that that thing that they use to scan things sticking that up in the air and down and like, you know, the head is going up and, and you know, all these really great... Because they don't, they don't speak galactic basics, so they have to do something to, to show that... Yeah. And, and you know, I, I really admire the, the 
special effects people for putting together all of that. You know, I, I suppose maybe some of it was like animation, which would be easier to but but yeah. Some of it was definitely animatronics and they had you know, they had to have them all move at the same time, which you know, if you know animatronics, you know that the more you know, yeah, basically the more movement and the more individual pieces that move, the harder. And <clears throat> And we learn about the the poison. Really great mystery in this episode. And we find out that Doc threatens, you know, Doc, Doc it, it, yeah, Doc is behind it. He threatens to hit the reverse card, I mean, button. And, you know, now we learn, no, 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 the button isn't to shut them all down. It's to revert them to the original, bro which, that's clever, because... Who's going to, you know, nobody's going to go in there and say, okay, Doc, you got to shut him down. Or, or certainly, if they do, he, he'd he be like, okay, screw you, I'm going to revert them to the original, you know. So, yeah, the this thing of, uh, what's it called? Yeah, it's a it's a clever, like, we, we did believe him when he said that there is a shut-off, that, that it's just the shut-off button, because if he wasn't a zealot, of course, the the you know it would make sense for there to be a just straight shut off button, and we learn that he's a separatist, although he doesn't like, the, you know, he he thinks that Count Dooku was a visionary, and Bo Katan zaps him before he can finish his big monologue. I guess she's not a fan of politics in prequel Star Wars either. So yeah. That was a that was a cute little nod because that is one of the ma major complaints that uh, you know that's also you know ag again we see droids from the prequels in the Mandalorian show and they just feel they're not so so shiny and and like there's not this sheen that feels very fake instead it has this more grimy kind of it feels like it's there and like there's no way it is, you know. It's gotta be animation. There's, I, I, there's no way that they can make a droid that size, that weight, and make it move like that, in in live action. The, the in with practical effects, it has to be animation. But there's a, there's just these little details to it that makes it feel more, you know, that for the super battle droids, but also the the battle droid that kept telling Din. Would you please stop doing that? You know, so yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and and the <laughs> Grogu helps Lizzo win uh, do really well with the sport because he's like, you know, oh she you know, she's she treats me well, so I'm gonna help her. And it's just yeah, that was that was very, very sweet. And Bo Katan challenges Axe. And I really like this detail that, like, she's fighting to take him out without, like, doing serious damage. But he's basically fighting to kill. You know, the first thing he fires is, like, a rocket. Like, if she didn't manage to dodge out of the way, I guess there's a chance it's just gonna hurt her really badly. But very likely she would die. Like... Is that the rocket that they usually use to, like, blow up spaceships? Or, it, it might have been a smaller rocket, but still, like, there, that's, that thing is not just to, like, yeah. So, and, and, you know, he's the one who gets out a blade first. And when she does get out a blade, you know, she has a chance to, like, cut his face. And she chooses not to. She, like, I think she punches him instead or something like that. So, you know, he didn't. Like, she was the one who challenged him, but when she challenged him, like, he was willing to kill her. Uh, you know, basically, like, yeah, I mean, he would rather kill her in front of all of the other Mercilorians than for her to rule them again, because he legitimately does not believe that she should. And, yeah. You know, Din explains that Bo-Katan did win the Dark Saber, and he hands you know. So so you know, we've got his hand and the and the hilt for the saber, and he hands it to her. And I just like to imagine that he's thinking, 
Don't press the button. Don't press the button. And I was a little surprised that, you know, she, she extends the saber, but she doesn't, like, hold it up, and we see them kneel, but I don't know. Maybe they felt like it would be too obvious a callback. But, yeah, uh, absolutely, you know, another episode I love, although it definitely does have problematic aspects. Again, make sure you watch Jesse Gender's video. And, yeah, um, I don't really have anything else to say about it. Yeah, really excited. So, there's yeah, there's now two episodes left of this season, and, yeah, um, really, really excited to see what the, the, you know, what, was this the only, did, did all of the Mandalorians that left her, did all of them join this one? I guess that would certainly make sense. They're, you know, stronger in strength in numbers, and they knew that, you know, Bo-Katan didn't want to be a Mandalorian, but she was maybe the only one, yeah. So, so, you know, we still, we've got the one surviving pirate out there, and, yeah, you know, maybe, I, I figure at least one of the last two episodes of the season will probably be about how we'll, like, what's the, what's the word? We'll, we'll see them try to form a society, uh, you know, on the, the, I, f I forget what the place is called, but the Grief Cargo high magistrate place um so yeah very excited to, to to see that and yeah absolutely loving this season so yeah this is the way